I figured it'd be fun to go through each piece of ATG equipment and explain the science of them. So here we go. First, the ATG Mobility Box. This device provides you with mainly two things, hand assistance and a scalable way to change front foot height or back foot height in a split squat. Increasing mobility demand in your hip flexors and your knee joint the lower you go while decreasing demand the higher you go. And if I put all of my weight into these poles, you could see how I would lift off the ground. So it's a great way to unload the body, similar to the effects of training in a pool. You can also use this device with ATG buddies when doing something like a poliquin step. Knee over toe away from the poles, opposite leg pointed up, kissing the heel and pressing up if you can tolerate it. If at any height you can't tolerate it, flip the wedge around towards the poles, offload with the hands, just like you would with the split squat. Increasing in height as tolerated, I like to stay around a one to eight inch window when considering a max height. You can then start to add weight as well. Research showing that doing these decline single leg squats on one leg allows for an improvement in quadriceps activation. That's the muscle that extends the knee. As you lower down, that muscle has to control the knee joint, so it makes sense why it's activated more. And when you elevate the foot, you're taking all of the ankle muscles out of the equation because they're in an actively insufficient position. They are plantar flexed, meaning they're going to have a pretty hard time lengthening and controlling that descent. I'm one of the opinion that it also increases VMO activation. Whether or not it does this preferentially is an argument in the literature, but the proportion of the size of my quadriceps and countless other ATG coaches' quadriceps as a result of measurably progressing in this and other exercises have led to a much more noticeable VMO size compared to the lateral quad size. Take that with what you will. When combining the ATG Buddy with the ATG Mobility Box, it is also very easy to perform calf raises. I'll put it at this angle so you can see it, but the more that I put my foot onto the wedge, the more stretch I get in the calf muscles. Similarly, the more that I put this off leg forward and pitch my weight forward, the more stretch I get in the calf muscles. So you can regress with less of your off leg forward and less of your feet on the wedge. Finding that happy medium to where you have complete pain-free loading while still getting an adequate challenge is what we go for on this exercise. Progressing with more weight as you can tolerate. Now we also do a calf raise with a bent knee. What this does is it puts the gastroc, the calf muscle that starts at the bottom of the ankle and crosses the knee at an actively insufficient position because gastroc plantar flexes the ankle and flexes the knee. So here we're already flexing the knee. Therefore, when we're digging into the ankle, there's more tension placed onto the soleus muscle, the muscle that directly attaches to the Achilles and is very, very important for Achilles health. Progress it the same way, less front foot on the wedge, less stretch, and less of your body weight forward, less stretch. Make it harder by going up higher and pitching the weight more forward. Common compensation is trying to flex up with your hip. Just try to keep the hip down and just come from the ankle. Increase weight as tolerated. Almost forgot this, this is literally the reverse of the forward step down. Instead of knee over toe, think hip behind heel, you start to dig into that posterior hip capsule, a layer of connective tissue surrounding the hip joint that is usually thrusted forward in a lot of people because of tightness in the hip flexors and being in constant sedentary postures. Hips forward makes it very hard to express anything but. So we want hips behind heels, tap the off legs toe, and then press up shoulders to the ceiling. Again, progress with more height. I find capping at eight inches is a good benchmark. Adding weight if tolerated. Hand assistance on the poles if not. So as you can see, the ATG Mobility Box has a lot of different uses in it. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could even do a seated good morning progression by setting the height of the box so that your thighs are parallel with the floor. Butt back, chest out, fall down, trying to get your torso parallel to the floor, back nice and flat as the dumbbells touch the ground and then you come up. Because of how versatile this device is in doing so many of the ATG exercises, it's probably my number one recommended device if you don't have any equipment thus far. My number two recommended device, that's gotta be the backward treadmill. Back in the old days of ATG, Ben Patrick and his team would get all of his clients going forward and backwards with sled on turf. That alone got people on the route to getting out of pain and towards more athletic ability. Why is that the case? My theory is that you get a safe way to get moderate to high intensity exercise, blood flow, and loading in the areas responsible 
responsible for bearing your weight in life and in sport. You can adjust the resistance of the treadmill with the little knob on the side. And what I usually do is get a three minute timer, set it right in front of me, and I just go 30 seconds one way and then 30 seconds the other way. Hands gripped on the rails right by the pad, athletic posture, and then going fast. Doing that back and forth, toasting yourself forwards, going nice and smooth backwards to what you can tolerate pain-free. Maybe you can't sprint as fast as you can backwards, as fast as you can forwards. Simply decrease the intensity, just take a step. If you can take a step, offloaded, little inch steps, that's all you need because the body will give you a little bit more range within a week. And then maybe instead of one inch, you get to two inches. Maybe instead of two inches, you get the whole foot, so on and so forth over weeks, months, years. The progression is not sexy, it takes time, but it's an assured route. So for that reason, this is my number two favorite piece of equipment because even if you couldn't afford this, there's always the option of getting a broken treadmill off of Craigslist or from one of your neighbors and just spinning the belt in reverse. That's what I got at home while I keep this one in the clinic. Then another great piece of equipment is the knee mat. The goal of it is just to take pressure off of the knee when doing things like an ATG couch stretch. How do you do that exercise? Split stance, load through this leg, squeeze the glute, feel the stretch, and hold. This is the easiest starting point with a lot of forward lean and with the ball of your foot into the pad. Make it harder by getting flush with the pad, ankle now plantar flex, same thing, squeeze the glute, hold. If you can get to that point, start to come up tall. If that's even easy for you, knee completely flush with the wall, squeeze the glute, come up tall. This is the long-term goal. And again, it might take weeks, months, some people years to get this range of motion back into the joint. But the beauty of this device is you don't have to slam your knee into the floor and fight through all kinds of discomfort. It makes it a very enjoyable way to get more range of motion within these joints. I already showed you that I like ATG buddies for my single leg work, but for when training on both <coughs> legs, I like a little bit more stability with the slant board. Again, research shows when the heels are pitched upwards, there's less activation in the calves, more activation in the quads, meaning more gains in the muscles directly responsible for stabilizing the knee and keeping it healthy during athletic activities. If the load is too much, again, more weight into the poles, takes weight off of the knees. So facing the board towards these poles allows you to easily offload the knees as you work towards your pain-free range of motion. Coach Ken, what if down here hurts? Just don't go down that far. Stop within a partial range and just groove this. Week after week, your body will give you a little bit more, a little bit more a little bit more. You might even be able to ditch the poles and use weight over time. But Coach Ken, my knees really, really hurt. All right, floss bands. Evidence shows that these have been very beneficial tools in improving mobility, decreasing pain, and improving function. As far as why it's so beneficial, the literature isn't exactly clear, but there are some theories. The one that I like the most is the theory that these bands place the joint in a more hypoxic environment. What does that mean? Devoid of oxygen. Cutting off blood flow for a time to this joint means the muscle has to work harder for the same amount of reps in a given exercise. So, something as simple as just doing mini pulses on a slant board now becomes more challenging. And we know conclusively, clear cut in the literature that if you can get into some moderate to high intensity exercise within a joint, you're going to cause changes. I like just pulsing in the bottom quarter until you get a pain-free muscle burn and then another 10 to 20 reps after that. I'm beginning to feel a burn right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and rep that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Take the bands off, and then you can start your working sets of that exercise, usually with a lot less pain. All right, my phone's starting to die, so I'm gonna actually separate this into two part series. Part two, I'm gonna go over the Nordic back extension. What else I got in here? Back bench, tip bar, and ab straps, and how it fits into the overall picture of the complete ATG system. If you have any questions, my Instagram is in the description. Feel free to shoot me a DM or comment below. Here's to a greater pursuit of truth.